Ask the pastor. Somebody came up, Marion came up with a good idea. Let's ask the pastor. So Kevin, are you ready for this? Yes, ready. You ready for this, Ray? As best I can. All right, here it is. Ask the pastor, put the question up. It says, as we start Leviticus, that's pertaining to the Levites, as we start Leviticus, please explain as a pastor why so many bulls, so many rams, so many lambs, goats had to be killed and dissected for one family, one family. I have thought many times, many a time, to be a priest in those days for years was an awful, smelly, hot, disgusting job. Also, where did all of that blood get emptied at the end of the day? Marion. Okay, Marion, uh, there's several questions there, but let's talk about the offerings for a minute. Do you know who made the first offering? God did. Do you know where he made it? In the Garden of Eden. Do you know why? Because mankind disobeyed God and sinned and ate the fruit that he was told not to eat. And he, I mean, imagine the the idea of you're going to hide from God so you hide behind a bush. I mean, think about that. You hide behind a bush? You're going to hide from God? You're going to hide behind a bush? God made the bush. God made everything. And you're hiding from God? So he begins to ask questions. What have you done? Where are you at? And he asks questions simply because, because before this, he would just simply tell the people. He would tell Adam, name the animals, or he would tell Adam, here's your wife, or whatever. But after the questions, or after the sin. The questions are becoming asked because God wants him to confess his sin. The other thing is they made, they covered themselves because they saw that they were naked. They didn't see that before sin, but after sin, all of a sudden they realize they're naked. So they covered themselves with leaves. It's not, it's not, it's not good enough. Leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. So God sacrifices an animal. And he creates the skin, and he gives it to them to put it on themselves. Now, go later in time. As man emerges and begins to go after other gods, he does sacrifices. Chemosh, Milcom, and all the rest of the gods. They conjure up in their mind who God is by looking at the stars, the creation of of God himself. And they make gods out of these things, and they begin to sacrifice other animals, all kinds of animals. And they begin to kill them, and they begin to do things with the blood. They eat the blood, they drink the blood, all this comes. So by the time Moses arrives and they come out of Egypt, who had a very bloody way of dealing with uh, sacrifices to the gods, Egypt, uh, and God says, Moses, I need to tell you some laws. And he tells them the laws, and he gives them the laws, and then... The Levites, which is what you're pertaining to, five books of Moses, Genesis, Acts, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Um, Leviticus is pertaining to the Levites and telling the Levites how to deal with the sacrifices. Now, there's very, I don't want to get into too much of this because we'd have to be here all day. But I can say that there's very specific ways that you sacrifice the animal to make it, first of all, to make it uh, not for the animal suffering because when they sacrificed the animal the Levites and the men had to put their hands on the head that's one thing right there secondly they had to cut certain parts out of the body that would be burned outside and they kept the meat and all of that the Levites would eventually eat the meat and most of it was burned outside nevertheless what they did is they were instructed to do things with the blood. The blood was to be sprinkled seven times on the altar. And on this side, that side, some blood, in the case of the Day of Atonement, would be sprinkled seven times in front of the Ark of the Covenant and so on. There's all of these rules. Then, and by the way, the blood, there's a lot of blood. The blood would be burned outside Jerusalem or outside 
the camp with all of the other. And so when blood burns, it burns. And so that's how you get rid of the blood. Nevertheless, the idea was that a sacrifice was important. Jesus Christ comes on the scene 2,000 years ago, and he's born. He lives a life that fulfills God's law. As he lives that life, the, the priests and everybody get angry at him, and they crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. So they do, and he begins to bleed. Human blood, divine blood, godly blood and human blood. Both, fully God, fully man. And he bleeds. And on the cross, Jesus Christ says, it is finished. No more sacrifices. Because those sacrifices pointed to what Jesus Christ did. Fulfilled the law of God which demonstrates what was necessary for sin. Remember that sacrifices and blood was spilled for sin because without the redemption, without the bleeding of the lamb, there's no redemption of sin. That's in Leviticus. Now, what they did with the blood is they burned it outside the camp. What they did with the other elements of the animal they did according to God's command, very specific. I would read the book called None of These Diseases by Dr. S. I. McMillan. But I want to take you to 1 Corinthians, and this is how I conclude. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received, this is Paul, he speaks to the Corinthian church, I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. This is the night he's having with the disciples. He said, and when he had given thanks for the bread, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The broken body of Jesus Christ. There's a lot of sacrifices I can show you broken bodies of animals. But I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Then, in the same manner, verse 25... He also took the cup of, or the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant. This is the new agreement I'm going to make with you guys. The new covenant in my blood. The blood of Christ is the most powerful substance in the world, let me tell you. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over our staff. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over you, all, all the partners. This do as often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. The blood of Jesus Christ. So, I would simply say that the Hebrews simply did what God told them to do, which was a much more humane way to deal with animals and deal with the way you sacrifice. But at the same time, Jesus Christ put an end to it all when he went on the cross, died, and rose again. Seen by over 500 men, according to the Bible. And that's what I would say to you. So you need to think about that before you go any further, before you make conjectures about what the Bible says, understand that the Bible told us because of sin, sacrifices were made, but because Jesus Christ, the one to end all the sacrifices, died for you and died for me, we come to him and say, Jesus, come into my heart, be the Lord of my life. It is Jesus Christ I trust in. It is Jesus Christ who is our Lord, not the sacrifice of animals and blood. Jesus Christ, because he made one sacrifice and he bled once for all of us. And the blood is on us. In fact, the priest said, his blood be on us. <coughs> yeah. The priest didn't know what he was saying, but I'm glad he said that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's the way I would explain it. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, I, I just, I like this order of... Uh of how we go, Pastor Rod. I always learn so much when you speak, and I agree with you 100%. Everything you said, a couple things I would I would add. Um, 
one thing is God loves animals, right? And we had this conversation, one of the questions uh, a few weeks back, we were talking about do animals go to heaven and things like that. And we were all giving our uh, two cents on that. But um, I remember in, in 2 Samuel 12, where David takes Bathsheba as his own, has his way with her, and then she becomes pregnant. He tries, he gets Uriah to come back and uh, Uriah wouldn't go home and be with his wife to cover up the, the out, uh, you know, the adulterous <laughs> um, pregnancy. He wouldn't go home two nights. He wouldn't go home. So David sends him back to the battlefield with his own death warrant, basically to Joab uh, saying, put him in the front lines where there's going to be bloodshed. And so David is just going about his own life. Uriah is dead and David's doing his own thing. Of course, the child dies and, and everything, but, um, but Nathan comes to rebuke David. And the way he rebukes him is through a, a story about a little baby lamb, right? There's a, a rich, traveler comes and um so the neighbor takes the the lamb of his neighbor and was the the individual treated this lamb as his own as his as part of his family as his own daughter and so it just shows a glimpse of and david was so infuriated by this because he was a shepherd right and so david had a had a, a a love for animals and he it took this to kind of wake him up and snap him out of his uh his uh derangement you know his um whatever he was he was basically in his own mind he was he was okay he was justifying himself but he was definitely guilty but it took this to kind of wake him up out of that and uh all that to say god gives us a love for animals as well and there is something there and and one thing that leviticus says is i think it's in the first chapter actually um uh, chapter one and verse four, I believe, where uh, the the person bringing the sacrifice was required to put the hand on the head of the animal, right? So if you even just put your hand on your own head right now, you can in some places possibly feel a pulse, but you feel the the blood running through your head, and so the the individuals that were giving the sacrifice were now connected with this animal in some way and experiencing the lifeblood running through this animal. And this animal was about to die. That blood was going to be drained out of that animal. All that to say that this is a gruesome, horrible process because sin is gruesome and horrible. Sin is just so detestable to the Lord. And the wages of sin is death, plain and simple. And the, like Pastor Rod mentioned, the 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 animal sacrifice was substitutionary right it was just a substitute it, it was just a foreshadowing of what jesus was going to come and do and just put an end to all that as pastor rod mentioned i'll just reiterate it again jesus put an end to those sacrifices because he is the perfect sacrifice and as we, as we kind of turn it back on jesus now he came lived a sinless life but he suffered a brutal beating he was whipped. He was hit with a scepter. They ripped his beard out. They spit on him. They punched him. Uh, they whipped him. His back was whipped and lashed. He died a gruesome death and crucified. One of the most horrible ways to die uh, on that cross. And all for us. He died for our sin. He took the punishment that belonged to us. He took it upon himself. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed, right? That, and even as Pastor Rod mentioned, the communion um, portion of Scripture, his body broken for us, his, his blood bled for us. And, and we need to remember that, that it was a brutal process, what happened to Jesus, but it was a, a, it was a beautiful gesture by our loving God. He, he couldn't stand the thought of living eternity without us, so he sent Jesus. So they needed to experience that sacrifice. They needed to experience that loss and the brutality of it all because Jesus was going to die a brutal death. And that covered all uh, that, that healed and, and took away all of our sin and not just covered, but it took away our sin as far as the East is from the West. So far as he taken our sins from us. So I hope that makes sense. I know I uh, rambled a bit, but uh, I will end right there. That's good. Excellent, Kevin. Very good. Mm. Ray? Mm. This is really interesting, uh, Marion. Um, 
I want to go back to Genesis, to, to the first example that you gave, Rod. The Bible tells us very clearly that God used to walk in the garden in the cool of the day, I think is, is how it's put. So Adam and Eve were in fellowship with him. And when they had sinned and taken of the fruit of the tree and hid themselves, the Lord asked them a very interesting question. Now let's remember that he knows everything. He's the best GPS system you can get. He knows exactly where you are all the time. And I think there's another angle to his question. Adam, where are you? And I think the other angle is, I know you've committed sin. I know you're hiding. But where are you in relationship to me? Adam, where are you? Where are you in relationship to me? And because you've sinned, we now have to commit the first death on earth, the slaying of the animal. And, and here God is saying, it's almost like a type of Christ. I will cover your sin. Kills the animal, clothes them with, 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 with the animal skin. And, and fast forward to all the things that you've said and to, to, to what uh, Kevin has said. Jesus actually shed his blood about three times for us as the lamb. The first one was when he sweat great drops of blood in the garden of Gethsemane. And he was in probably the most intense spiritual battle that he could have ever been in or that anybody could have ever been in to the point, and there is a medical condition, that when a certain depth of anxiety and stress comes upon you, you can sweat blood. And he sweat blood. The second time was when the Roman soldiers beat him. And Isaiah says that he was marred beyond any man. And yeah. then the third one was when he was on the cross and he shed his blood there. And I'm always, uh, I, I, when we take communion, my wife and I take communion regularly at home. We always read 1 Corinthians 11, and it says, this is my body which is broken for you. We know that the, the, the Bible also says not a bone in his body will be broken. So what did it mean that he was broken for us? You remember, uh, uh, Marion, take a look at this, because you remember that the Roman soldier speared Christ. Yep. And what came out of his side was blood and water. And if you want to study the medical condition, Marion, it means that he died of a broken heart. Mm. And he did that for us. And, and that was the ultimate sacrifice. And he is known, if you read the Bible, you will know as the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And so that was, as Rod has said, as Kevin has said, that was the final sacrifice. No more blood to be shed. And that was it. I think that's beautiful. And uh, that's, that's exactly what we talk about. And so thank you so much, Marion, for asking that question. Uh, we enjoyed it very much. And uh, it's now 4.49 and 17, 18, 19 seconds. So we will talk to you later. And uh, it is good uh, to pray. And we'll be here on Friday again. And we'll be praying. Uh, but the time will come when it will be Thursday and Friday, but not till April. So don't ask questions until we get to March. <laughs> March and April, but we're, we're getting ourselves ready because there's a whole bunch of things happening and we're just trying to get on, on board with that. Anyway, thank you so much for being with us. God bless you and make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you as he writes his name on your life this week. Go in the peace and grace of Jesus Christ. See you later.